Hi, and welcome to the Audio Engineering Podcast 13 with me, Streaky, and... And me, Shay. Today, we're going to be discussing mastering and mixing for different formats. Do you mix in a different way, or do you master if it's going to MP3, vinyl, uh, upload websites, CD, cassette, cassette. Uh, mini disc, Super 8, laser disc? I think. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Would I master anything differently for different formats? Do I do that? Okay, so there's an ideal way and a realistic way. So I personally try and master something so that I know it's going to work on all formats. Now, delivery wise, that's a different thing. So I might deliver something in a 24 bit 48 or 96 to a digital platform, depending on which one it is. But then that's just more of a resolution thing rather than the way that I'm working on the track and the way that I'm EQing it. If I'm EQing, I tend to kind of work on the basis that I know that the client isn't going to do loads of different versions because they want one definitive version that works across every format. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say to me, OK, we want a vinyl, we want an MP3, we want... I mean, ideally, I think, yes, it would be amazing to have different versions, but... I also think on the flip side of that, that having different versions, it, you know, it lends to the track actually sounding different. Of course, yeah. And it's just, it's, Where, not, it's too more work. It's too much work for the same thing. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, not but it's, um, logical. Yeah, from a cash point of view, yes. But if you were cutting vinyl, I mean, let's break it down the different ways how I would do it if I was going to do different versions, which I, I don't and nobody has asked me to so this is totally irrelevant because <laughs> nobody ever does it but if you i was going to do it in an ideal scenario i would not record with massive limiting on the end for vinyl i would go straight from the, the i'd go straight from the um the player through the equipment all analog directly straight to disc and cut that so that I'm not using any A to D on the way out. It's just going purely analog from a high-end WAV file. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a joy. No limiting, just keeping it super dynamic and fat sounding. That would be brilliant. That's old school, though. So that's mm. totally old analog way. Or, you know, if you were doing just really high-end digital then it'd be lovely just to keep everything at, instead of having sample rate convert stuff or dither things, keeping things, you know, starting the project at a very high sample rate, 96, 96, 24, something like that, or 96, 32, and then keeping it that format all the way through, then it's going to a high end, um, you know, like a Tidal or something, mm -hmm. which I personally think is the future. And I think it's going to go that way because this? with bandwidth and with, a disc space mm -hmm. that's not is they're the only things that are stopping it going that way so there's no reason why you shouldn't you know why are we still mastering cd format because no one else Four, can really tell the difference 44 16 it's like yeah but then if you if you take that attitude then nothing ever progresses well true yeah but um i mean but for us listening that make music and do stuff with music we can tell a difference and it's like perfect yeah. like it's so much better such a good idea like a step forward but the person that just like sifts through iTunes and buys an album because their mate's got it, they don't care that like it was re recorded through gear at 96K. They but just... then do you not think that's changing now with the sort of vinyl coming back? People are starting to get a little bit more audio file on stuff and starting to think, you know, people that are into music like and kids these days, they're thinking they want more than just being able to rip an MP3. Like the MP3 or the, you know, or the streaming service is great for if you just need, you know, for, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ease or, yeah. you know, it's, it's easy to, it's easy. They're accessible. You mm -hmm. can get them in the car, blah, blah, which is great. But then if you want something that's a little bit of a better format, then that's why people go to vinyl because they know that it sounds better. Yeah. But it's too niche. Or do you still. think that they don't think that it sounds better? They, they just don't care. Know, they just want it because it's vinyl and it's exactly. And it's the label. artwork and it's a, a hard copy of something. Like um, if you played someone, like you say, if you were recording it to uh, or printing it to vinyl, there'll be no limiters involved, which obviously means it's going to be lower in volume. But 
ev- the everyday person would buy an album on um, vinyl and an album on CD, the same album, and not really care that the vinyl one is lower in volume than maybe the um, mastered CD version that's like maybe a little bit louder because it would have limiting on it. Like they don't, no one would really care. Whereas someone like me and you would listen to it and be like, oh, I know why that is. And we'd sort of yeah. analyze it a bit more where most people, they don't care. If they buy vinyl, it's mainly because they're either collectors of vinyl because they like a hard copy of something and the artwork and the um, just the hobbyist type thing. But the everyday person, if you can get an MP3 for free by doing it, I know it's illegal in that, but for free, just searching on the internet for an MP3, 99% of people are going to do that. So mastering. Yeah, but I think with even my kids, they realize what sounds bad and what doesn't. In the same way that when you watch a video, you see, okay, yeah. that's bad quality yeah. compared to something that is good quality. Yeah. I mean, like I, I pay for streaming I think sites. Can like I can hear the Spotify difference. and stuff like that because um it's a nicer stream like you you can it's a difference do you know what i mean especially for yeah. reference in music but then again i'm into music like i'm into the making of it i'm into the sonics of it i'm not just into the lyrics or buying it because my friend says oh listen to this that we heard on saturday night and got wasted to it's more i'm interested in the actual music i'm interested in how it's made so i will go that extra mile for it where i suppose like your kids are probably the same because you're into music do you know what i mean so it would just it would naturally they would be more interested in the music than just, yeah, this is a good song because everyone else says so. Yeah, and especially seeing that I, don't, I lock them in their room if they don't um, learn how to EQ correctly. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I sit them, I sit playing them, right, this is a good sound, this is a bad sound, this is a good sound, this is a bad sound. <laughs> it's a strict regime in our house. Nice. So, um, Okay, so for different formats, I I kind of just go for one thing, keep it high res, and then distribute it however it needs to go. So yeah. you kind of flatten it out for, um, flatten it out for vinyl or for CD or for whatever format it's got to go to. Mm-hmm. Try and keep it as high resolution and try and use the best conversion packages I, I can yeah. for, for doing those convert conversions. I mean, when it, when it comes to mixing stuff. Um, it's not just the platform that you would probably go for different. It's the um, the version of the song. Like a PA version would be mixed differently, obviously, to a um, full mix version. It's yeah, not just the vocal radio out. Ver- a exactly. radio version might yeah. be different. A radio version normally vocal up slightly, do you know what I mean? Or vocal EQ'd slightly different, so it's a little bit more present and pokey. Um, yeah. But then again, the overall sound of it, that you've always got in the back of your mind, it needs to go to mastering where you would expect the mastering engineer to want to do the same on every one. Do you know what I mean? You'd want the same kind yeah. of sound on every one. So the consistency really lies in the mix engineer's hands with how it's going to sound, like making those differences in balance and whatever, but still having in the back of your mind that the mastering engineer is probably going to listen to the loudest one first and then start tweaking from that one and make tweaks to the others if they need changing, but it's you, you, it needs to you be You always consistent. work on the main version. Yeah, you always work on the full version, the loudest part of normally, yeah? But yeah? Like, there's no point going for the PA version at the start intro part. You might as well go yeah. from, yeah, the loudest part of the fullest one. But then, yeah, as far as mixing comes in, it's um, different styles or different approaches to different versions like i said pa version i would do a lot different not a lot differently but there'd be obviously things missing from the pa version there'd be no lead vocal there'd be backing in there slightly but the backings would be lower in the pa than they would in the full version because there's no recorded lead on there it's going to be a live lead vocal that's going to be there so they're just there to kind of back up a little bit um there'll probably be a little yeah bit. the thing i would the thing I would say about that when it comes to a mastering engineer is making sure that you don't change the levels massively uh-huh. because you're mastering the main version. You're going to just run through the same settings for mm. the backing tracks. And there's nothing worse than when someone's done loads of bus compression on the main version and then not put it on the the instrumental or the PA mix. And then you're like, well, it's a totally different sound. Exactly. It's just, it's and not that's just ridiculous. Why would you do that? Because yeah. then, the instrumental is never going to sound the same as the main version. And but it, you'd be surprised how many people do that. I get it all the time. Whether it's like, can you have like, can you do um, a PA version, an instrumental version, and just an acapella? So my idea of that is, you mix the full one first, 
Then you do the PA version where you take the lead vocal out and then you play around with the back end slightly and ask them what words they'd probably want left in. Normally like the last word at the end of each phrase so they can catch their yeah. breath live. But really you should just be muting that stuff surely. Exactly, yeah. You're just mixed. getting rid of things. And then when it comes to the instrumental version, it's just the backing track without any vocal in it. It's not like a change. Like my output bus or like whatever I've got output processing will not change whatsoever because it needs to stay consistent. So when it does go to mastering, the mastering engineer will always have a consistent sound rather than a full mix that's like almost slammed, like maybe not limited, but compressed quite hard. And then an instrumental that's pokey, loads of distance in it, loads of dynamic range in it compared to the full mix, which is, again, you're going to have to spend a lot more time mastering it. Then you're going to have to try and compensate for each one just to try and get well, the consistency. Most of the main mix engineers, the big guys, a lot of their stuff is already pushed quite hard anyway, hmm. and it doesn't, and it sounds near enough finished. Yeah, but then you don't have to do that much for it. Yeah, no, yeah, but in mastering, you're, or, you are, uh, I mean, in that case, as a mastering engineer, you are literally just the, um, almost like the supervisor of the project. Like, is that okay? Yeah, maybe give it a little bit here, but you're, you're not like going in and being like, right, what do we need to do? You're going in with the mic. Yeah, but that of, is what a mastering engineer is, exactly what you've described well, there. It and should be. people... Yeah, but I think yeah. people misunderstand what a mastering engineer is and they see it as somebody who's going to save their mix. That's, that's the but, word. That's it. Someone that's going to save not, the day. Yeah, yeah, it's not that at all. It's got to be the mix engineer has got to get the mix to a point where it sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, then the mastering engineer is a supervisor who transfers it to the format that it needs to go to. Yeah, that's all mastering was. the way it was. Yeah. It should still be. There's no... It's not a massively creative process. It's more correctional process or a slight thing. People put too much emphasis on the fact that it's going to change the whole mix yeah. where, yeah, it adds and it obviously can get more separation and more clarity and things like that. But it's not to the point where it's totally changing the mix completely. Yeah. That's why you AB between the, the main mix and what you're doing all the time so that you don't lose the juice of the... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's expected now, like as a martial engineer, it is expected for you to um, put your 10 cents in. Do you know what I mean? Give it your flavor. It's up to, it's like expected that you add something to the project when if you don't, it's considered like, well, what did you do? Well, really, if you've done nothing, that's testament to how good your mix was in the first place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, it's not like I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm supposed to be here just to tell you, just to give you the reassurance. Yeah, it's fine. And now it's on the format that you wanted it to be ready for distribution. Yeah. Not, yeah, I widened it out and made a little bit more top end and gave it more bottom, which is kind of things that you have to do now. Um, well, it's expected by, from amateurs to do that. Yeah. Well, then it's, that, that's, and it's the mixes that you get given. You'll be able to always be able to tell by the mix that you get given, really, wouldn't you? It if you start widening with anyone that I've worked with of any high profile, if you start widening the mix out, they get the right hum. Yeah, because they'll know instantly as soon as they listen. Because <laughs> they're it. like, what are you doing to my mix? You're just <laughs> ruining. I've spent ages placing everything in the mix. Yeah. You're banging a stereo width on it yeah. to spread it out. What are you spreading it out for? I've yeah. already got it as wide as I want it. And I want it bass sitting there. And I want the hat sitting there. I don't need you with your fancy gadgets monoing yeah. the bass and putting a load of stereo width in. But then again, if you're, if you're just say analyzing the mix, I say you put the track through before you touch any knobs, you look at your meters and you see what's going on with like the stereo spread and stuff you'll be able to see that it's kind of a good mix that would have probably been done already like the bass would be mono-ish already like on a good mix yeah. and then do you know what i mean the sides are nice and open but a bit freer less dense so you wouldn't have to do that yeah but what i mean is anybody that's mastering who is a sort of more of an amateur mastering engineer just start slamming stuff on and start seeing it as some big creative process oh, yeah. where they can put their mark like you're saying yeah where it's like, well, no, what are you doing? Yeah. Just leave it alone. Sit and listen to it. How does it sound? Is it all right? Yes. Leave it alone then. Turn it up. Move on. Yeah. And Otherwise, you're, always... you're just ruining what someone's done and spent ages on. And you always get the um, the odd submission that's like you send it back. Uh, I can't really tell the difference in the sound. Like I can't really tell yeah, what the good. difference in it. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just a little bit louder. Like Now it's just as loud as everything else, but it just it's not... Yeah, it sounds the same paid, as mine. But I paid you to do something? Yeah, it's like, but, well, I did. What do you want me yeah, to yeah. do? You want me I've to... told you it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like going to the doctors and saying, like, if you pay for a private doctor, going yeah. to a private doctor because you think you've got something wrong with you, yeah. 
And then they say, no, no, you're absolutely fine. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> at least come up with something. At least just give me something. I'll 100 it? quid for yeah. this meeting. Just give me Sorry, a dose of something. I can't find you anything. All right, you've got cancer. <laughs> How does that feel? Better? Yeah, cheers, mate. Exactly Worth my money now. the same thing yeah. as that. Yeah. But people just do not get that at all. I know. That is the main problem. It's not It's not a massively artistic thing. You're not a surgeon in that respect, mm. if we're going back to our doctor analogy, mm. where, you know, you're going for a checkup. You're not going for a... It's an MOT, isn't it? Yeah. You're it's not going stage. to have the, the stuff fixed. Is it roadworthy? Yeah. Isn't it? Exactly. Is it playworthy? There you go. Yes, it's fine. It's good, mate. Yeah. And then if it's not, up, move on. Yeah, there you go. And if it's not, <laughs> these are the things that were wrong with it. This is what you're going to need to rectify to make it roadworthy. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Come back to me and I'll tell you if it's sorted. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sort that out in your mix. Bring it back to me. I'll let you know. Oh, we're uh, loving this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That's podcast 13 done. Please subscribe. Please like and please come back for more. Hope if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. We're always happy to ask answer any questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.